Welcome aboard. I'm Captain Jake. And we're back with another episode of Field of Glory Kingdoms. This game was developed by Age Age Odd or Ode O D Ajo. So we're gonna get back in and try our hand at a campaign. We're gonna start with the El Cid campaign. So hopefully I got uh, stuff set up right up here in the options screen as far as you know, fog of war combat power uh, border style ownership vassals with leash color is nation's name colored not standards uh, Well, we'll do that. We need to allow more time for the AI to search for solutions and minor improvements in its capabilities. Well, we don't need that. We did turn down uh, uh, SFX last time. AI difficulty. Now, most people would go with balanced. I'm going to start with easy because this is such an in-depth game. Ah, such an in-depth game. I don't know what I'm doing. So, well, that's what we're going to we're going to start with is easy and just see how that goes we have a number of campaigns to play plus there will be some extra uh, stuff from uh, folks posting new campaigns and scenarios up on uh, steam so what you'll notice we are now in version uh, 1.0.2.2 so they came out with another update that updated the UI and a number of other things we won't go through those and just hopefully uh, that will enhance our games here. So we want to get to scenario. Okay. So let's do the El Cid scenario here. Okay. It's a 36 turn scenario limited to the Iberian Peninsula suitable for one to three players. Expect a free for all. Cool. Well, we'll try free for all and AI difficulty. Uh, easy. <laughs> Thank you. No, it doesn't like, it doesn't, what does this do? Still doesn't like changes. Now we're going to go easy anyway. Okay, we have 1087. Spain is in turmoil. The requisition has been brought to a standstill following the intervention of fanatical, uh, no idea, from Africa. With Leon Castile suffering a crippling defeat at the Battle of Saragossa in 1086. And barely managing to hold on to its recent conquest of uh, uh, Toledo. And now the uh, well, Helm Orvid are back, but this time the descendant of Tafa Lords of El Endalus. For those of you who've been with me for a while on a number of these things, I'm horrible pronouncing names. So beginning, <laughs> so I guess if you're new, get used to it. Oh yeah, and welcome back to my channel. Hopefully you enjoy Kingdoms. The tutorials are fabulous. So anyway, I digress. We are beginning to experience some regrets about inviting them in the first place. Into the chaos comes those who seek to improve their fortune. Legendary, or the mercenary leader El Cid, for example, Having gained a legendary reputation fighting for both Christians and Muslims, now looks with an ambitious eyes upon the wealthy but weak provinces of Valencia. Province of Valencia. Uh, uh, province of Valencia. Everything is in flux in this short scenario. Who will you lead to victory? Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So let's go ahead and just select that one. And let me just note something here so I don't forget. It is El Cid. And that's primarily for noting on my informational page. It's 1087 to 1097. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and select and get involved here.
we will always try to play uh, about 40 minutes to 50 minutes worth of the game and hopefully we reach a good stopping point who are we going to play what's going to be available i don't know this is our first one outside the uh uh, what is it outside of the tutorial? So here what we have we can choose Leon, which we've played before Servilia Muslim and Muslim Sunni That's their area and oh that's the guys we didn't want to invite <laughs> okay El Cid diverse multinational I don't know if because here's where he's located but it didn't zoom into anything in particular remarkable factions well, we're not necessarily going to pick a super big faction that we have to play uh, Barcelona, which might be the easiest to protect because it's in the corner. Um, ruler, passage rights, mutual to Leon, cooperation with Leon. Okay. Originally a border region of Charlemagne's empire and counts. Counts of Barcelona became gradually independent after the Carolinian, uh, Carol, Carolinian, yeah gave way to the Carpathian dynasty of France. Warring against the Muslims of El Andres, Barcelona managed to absorb the surrounding Catalonian countries and even extend their influence across the Pyrenees to uh, wherever that is. In 1137 CE, Barcelona and Aragon entered a dynasty union and Carol became principality of the Aragon. Okay, means these guys are together, that's good. Driving port of Barcelona became the base of Aragon's maritime trading economy in the Mediterranean. A commercial power arrived in Genoa and Venice. It also served as a springboard for acquisition of overseas empires, including Anodia, Sardinia, Sicily, Corsica, Corsica, Athens, and uh, Neopatis. Okay, and this guy. The context gameplay. What does this say? To begin, it is crucial to ensure that your treasury is not losing tens of amounts of money. Okay, modifiers. IT bonus. Okay, that so far looks good. National Authority. Okay. And what do we have here? Uh, and no. I'm going to take a minor faction. Let's do this one. Okay, I already read that one. So let's look at gameplay here. To begin with, it is critical to ensure that your treasury is not losing money. As it can severely limit your options, take stock of your regions and access whether any buildings are worth the cost. Know also that kingdoms randomizes the regions with diff different buildings, so your initial situation will vary even for the same nation between two tries at the same scenario. If not, consider dismantling them. If you are not under immediate threat and have exceeded your uh, routine allowance units with much reduced upkeep costs, it may be necessary to disband some units as a temporary measure. Selling regional decisions uh, can also help. Once your finances are in order, focus on your increasing income. Next, prioritize stabilizing your authority. If it is Negative, consider appointing peers of the realm as provincial governors. We have three, one, one, 
two, four. Okay. Uh, shredding regions through diplomacy or with the use of regional decisions. Bear in mind that the authority is challenging to gain and easy to lose. So consider constructing structures and improve it. Keep in mind that these structures are often tier two buildings, except for permanent defensive structures, which can bind authority at the tier one level. It's also important to be mindful of your neighbors and explore opportunities to forge relationships or treaties. The cooperation treaty is the easiest option and can prove relationships over time. If relations sour, consider becoming a vassal of a more powerful nation to secure protection. Don't rush to expand your territories. Developing your region is the key to success. Once your indicators are more positive and you have a capable army, consider who might be your first target. Remember that claims are typically made against nations with whom you have poor relationships, as you may need to relinquish. Let's see here. You may need to relinquish poor relations. No, some claims and, in, and insult a few people to make room for new targets. While being high in authority is desirable, it comes with drawbacks, such as losing more authority with certain actions and raising tensions with other nations. Avoid falling into the third tier of progress start and only evolve into a new form of government when you are confident you can maintain your authority. If in doubt, consolidate your gains and proceed with caution. Well, fortune may favor the bold, it also rewards the prepared. Okay. Let's do that. All right. We've read that. No, we've read this. Okay. There are over 50 regional decisions available in the game. These decisions can be sold or influenced to become more likely to appear. Tweaking odds cost money, though. Okay. All right. El Cid, special rules. This scenario spans 36 turns and can be decided as early as turn 18 if a top tier legacy player has double the points as a second place player. If the ratio is not met, the winner is determined by the highest legacy points at turn 36. Specific region offer bonus legacy points. Cordoba grants 50 bonus points and 5 per turn if conquered by a Catholic. Leon grants 50 points and 50 if taken by a Muslim. Valencia grants 50 points and 10 per turn if conquered by El Cid. Control of Toledo awards an additional 5 uh, LP per turn, whoever controls it. Additionally, when playing at experience difficulty or higher, these nations if under AR control gain and these bonus well we're not we're not worried about that now we're playing at experience level okay okay so here we are let's see here right looks like this guy Seems to know ownership style. Okay, we're kind of mountainous. What do we have here? Culture and populace. We have ivory color, average population, light orange color, uh, watered. 
high population. I don't think we have either one of those. Okay. We've got green surplus supply. Okay, that's good. Uh, dark orange color. Idle with a free slot. Orange color, idle region with free slots. All right. Uh, we want to inspect dark orange province. Okay, first off, let's go over here. Close that one first off. What do we have here? We have low risk, medium risk, high, low. Hmm, I can't tell if that's red. Uh, high revolt risk, huh? Hmm. Side, okay. Here's my weather overlay. There's uh, regions under harsh weather are color coded in any type of weather. They suffer from red denotes hot climates. Okay. Prone to heat waves and forest fire. I don't see any of that. Green are regions with possible flood or heavy rain. A kind of. Blue are regions of cold climate. All right. Let's just say. Shows domains also named provinces, boundaries have zoomed out the regions. Names is zoomed in. You need to control more than half the regions in a domain to create it. Regions within a domain help each other. Okay. Huh. each other for food and infrastructure. They also grant you the possibility to recruit and look over. Okay. Trade good overlay. Ooh, what's the red? You can see all trade goods are produced in all regions are missing trade goods. In red regions with three or more missing goods, cost of a lot of money to sustain. In orange regions, one or two missing goods. Okay. In blue regions, only bonus missing. Okay. Well, we're missing stuff in those two regions. Okay. How many legacy points are generated? Usually from culture and wonders, okay. National authority with positive authority are shown in tones of green, whereas one's in negative authority is shown in orange, okay. For your nation only, local authority, each region is shown as a number. All right, 55, 20, 20 and 20. All right, that'll work. Political overlay, regions color-coded, diplomatic status you have with their owner. Red denotes the nations you are at war with. Let's see. Does not appear that I'm at war with anyone. That's good. Uh, let's see here. Orange is neutral nation. I don't see any neutrals. Green are your own territory, whereas blue is your allies. Got no allies? Hmm. I think I need to ally with Erdogan. Relationships with these names are shown as a number. On a scale of minus 100 to 100 and 
is reciprocal. A nation with whom you have a relationship below 25 stress you and more may happen anytime soon. Ooh, that's not good. This guy doesn't trust me. This guy doesn't trust me. They don't trust me. Ooh, well. well that's no good. Religions. Religions uh, do call them heretics may appear. All right. What do I have here? Claims. Claims will grant you large amounts of authority upon conquest and generate at least one legacy point per turn. They are a great way to progress in civilization levels with more and more powerful government types. All right. No. Claim. Really? All right, so let's go over here. Projected in regional commerce, previous turn total money. Uh, is a resource accumulated globally, which is used for many actions like recruitment and decisions. Projected income for the next term may vary due to ongoing trades and events. If you go above your maximum, which will increase with banks and all, 25% of the extra will be lost each turn. Okay. We can only keep uh, 1,500 stacks of coins safely in the Royal Treasury. Okay, manpower generation, regional manpower. In Truins production, manpower generations total of 13. Previous turn total 50. Our equipment production of 30 allows us to maintain the most 105 musters of men ready to take arms. Okay. Manpower is a resource accumulated globally, which is used a lot by military units for their recruitment upkeep. If you go above your maximum, mostly determined by your overall military equipment production, 25% extras, we will lose each turn. Okay, diplomacy. Um, let's see. I have treaties with Leon or Rite of Passage. Request and our answers. Open zero legacy, 150 regions, average royalty, 65. Okay. And ruling since 28. This 28 turns, nine years. Married. Fair age 52, administration, military piety, located in Barcelona. Uh, can incite some characters to betray you. Current rule administration increases court expenses by current military increases authority gain by 20 in favors. Positive, uh, positive outcomes and events and students. Current ruler priority increases conversion rate. Okay. What are we at here? Uh, most pious. Uh, okay. Well, no jihad started. We're in the Iber. Yep. Looked at the papal states in Sevilla, which is the current champion of the faith, Shia only. Okay. Info. You and yourself, your nation overview is shown in the top center wars with other nations. Opening the panel automatically switches to the relationship map overlay. Okay, clicking on a reference to another nation in the panel by clicking on the region on the map will let you interact with that nation. Okay. I go here. All right. 
treaties with Aragon. That's not allowing me to move it. Okay. Let's try that again. Let's go back to diplomacy. Rights, operation passage rights. Diplomacy actions. Okay. Ownership, peace treaty. Transitional clauses. Okay, well, I'm not gonna worry about anybody else right now. Let's get by south. Settle down here. Go oh, ahead here. Ledger. All right. See, like I said, this game is so in depth. So, uh, neutral factions, Barcelona. Uh, five structures. We got a lot of structures. We got. Five open slots here in Genoa. Two and two, okay. Uh, battles in that in armies. Uh, power is 49, land, okay. We got characters at the court. Let me make sure I have a heir begin with regional decisions use the regional decisions you're able to get between one or four provincial units depending on the strength even if no foreign province here recruit, recruit okay sneak attack no, nope, not going to sneak attack nobody. Okay, select a decision to see valid region on the map. Uh, select a decision to see valid regions on the map. Once a region is clicked and the decision is played, you can cancel it by right-clicking on its icon on the map. Some decisions take more than one turn. Okay. I'm not going to run the risk, so let's get rid of that. And what do we have here? Metal production and legacy changes from control claims. Okay. And if we go here, here's my dynasty. Here's my overview. Crumbling, bottom tier aging, token zeros. Receiving a disorder token. Ouch. I don't think I want that. Okay. Flames. Barcelona. Is there a neutral. Starting to turn 50 claims or phase out after 20 turns unless it's chased into one of eight regions. Realm traits. Rights. Decisions. Reports. Zero. Summoned ability. Okay. Flames. No. Let's go here. Son, age 28. Loyalty, administrative, military, piety. Okay. Get all these nobles in the court. There's my daughter. See, son's loyalty is always unknown. He looks mad to begin with. Okay, let's go loyalty, health, everybody's in good health. He's very poor. 
or I don't know anybody who's filthy rich. All right, let's close that. All right. Authority and disorder. What's this? Okay, unstable. Sending. Flames to. I don't know why I gotta claim the Saragossa, but in Catalonia. All right, go ahead and close this. And the first thing we're gonna, uh, let's see, first thing we're gonna do is go here. And is this one. Now, fortification levels three, local authority, risk, current maximum number of buildings this region can support usually one slot per population. It's granted a few buildings do not cost a slot. Green frame, okay. Let's see here. Uh, chickens to diplomacy trade details all right trade uh neutral good missing trade trade goods i think trade is automatic so we don't have to worry about that go here uh, no i don't want to Add that. Let's go back. Region. I want to no new buildings. Click here to add a new structure. So money is three estimated changes. Infrastructure minus one. Money piety goes down. Money goes up. Let's do trade growth. Okay. Freeman. Right here. Fortified village, okay. It took one turn to build that, and I think that's all I can do. I'm going to build a, what is my fort status, three, Ooh, yeah, let's build that. Okay, go to the next region. The basis from production overall, religion production, this region to a certain total. If storage capacity not actively producing a unit, this province can go up to 16. Metals not doing anything here. Food, stewardship, everything looks good. Let's 
We can build something here. You want a stud? No, clay pit. Uh, what do we have here? Estimated infrastructure is down. Uh, we're already down three. We need to go up in infrastructure. There we go. Infrastructure goes up. Money is down. Okay, let's do infrastructure up. All right, that should take bring me up. And what's the next one? There we go. Minus four in money. Infrastructure is good. Manpower. Man, let's look for manpower. Food, money, infrastructure. Infrastructure is plus nine. Oh, my food, food's down. All right, let's do that. All right, so that should take me back to here. Check. All right, that's what we want to do. What is this? This scenario spends 36 turns. I already know that. Now, what do we have here? Okay. All right, let's close that. Let's go on to the next turn. Let's see what happens. All right, legacy. We're at the bottom. Authority. We've progress tokens. Okay, heresies will merge in a region with low piety. Production. They are inherently disloyal and can spread if not their increase in prior or military action can resolve this issue. Alright? Under the uh, wise ruler of Rome, Barcelona progressing. Progress tier released. Okay, our nation is on its way to progress. Well. Okay. What does this say? A new claim. Romero, driven by ambition, strikes a Lumen's claim uh, in the name of Barcelona. Okay. Uh, let's close that. Really? Barcelona has received your progress token is now standing at one progress token. Yes. Okay. Military, where is my money? All right, previous turn total money variations include these changes from regional commerce, population taxation, various turn-based changes. Money, okay, good. Well, we went up. What does it say? As a royalty of... Let's close that one. What is this? Uh, of ours, where it is, where? Powerful noble died in Barcelona. The belongings were 15 million were seized. Under the rise of Romero progressing. Oh. All right. Let's hit claims here. Hmm. I ain't going to war with these guys. Some abilities. Court expense increase. Okay. Yeah, some noble died. Huh?
Hundred percent. Eighty-eight. Ooh. Age twenty-nine. Treasury. Treasure. Everybody's healthy. All right, let's close that one up. So now what we're going to do, let's go to... Yeah, that guy, I don't know what claims, what I'm going to do with claims here. There is claims. Let me close that up. Close this up and... Already done that. And power, right? That's good. Oh, let's see. Hmm. I think they're still building those. Do my armies. You got no reason to have an army right now, Moto. I got I got a heavy infantry standing army unit. I got sergeants standing. An irregular jab. Okay. Nope, don't need to disband the sleep group until waking up. <laughs> All right, nope, we'll close that up. All right, let's go. Okay, one. Money is down, manpower is down, population, no growth. How do I get population to grow? Build more health buildings, okay? There's a bakery. Oh, that's Aragon. I don't care about Aragon. Alright, where's my is that my group? No, that's an Aragon. Oh. Huh. Okay, that's good. Now what I'm looking at, let me close this. This is four, okay. It's being requested. Uh, turns before completion. Structural cost, 26. That should go. Okay, another turn to build that one, okay. Now, I need health. Now, I'm building a bakery. Well, that's under air guns control now. Can I do anything here? I go to two to twelve.
Hmm. All right, well, don't understand why that, but we're going to do one more turn here. Now that we're kind of getting a handle on it. Okay, let's do four. We've got one more turn to build that. Then we go to one. Going to build the bakery. And this is Catholic clergy. All right, we ain't worried about that. Let's go to two. Trade borough. Commerce and production, okay. Fortify village, parish church. Three percent. Building slots, four of nine. Okay, well, we got to finish this one first. Same with that one. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, that one's building brickwork. Metals, infrastructure, equipment. Not owned. All right, I don't see any need to make a change, so let's go ahead and do the next turn. Let's see what happens. Uh, oh, we are now progress tokens too. Edict button allows you to spec specify a building for construction. This action will cost you the same amount of national authority. Temporary buildings like fortification and harvest cost nothing. No. Okay, we're still at the bottom as far as legacy. But we're not too far from moving up. So let's go ahead and click that. And what does this say? Barcelona received a progress token. Okay, check. Administrative example here is showing signs of organizing stewardship are increasing our own authority. Oh, well. That's cool. And you have received a new regional prospect. You have received a new regional prospect for resources. Okay, good. All right. Okay. This region is still some untapped potential resources yet to be discovered may about. If we only prospect the land entirely, depending on the trade, we might find a new place to explore the trade good prep. Must be owned, the region must have total. Okay. Select a decision to see valid map region. Okay. In green color, once a region is clicked and a decision is played, you can cancel it by right clicking an icon on the map. Okay. Some do maintain more than one turn. Okay. All right, we have now prospect for resources next turn. All right, good. All right, what does this say? Within their respective influence. Ooh. All right. Well, we're going to leave it at that. We're on turn three. Kind of moved a little slow in the beginning. I'm still trying. And, and like I said, I'm probably going to end up playing this entire scenario. And we'll learn as we go. I don't know any more than uh, the people just getting this game. So what does this say? One region has a long... 
low well okay well we want to change that and make a coup while the cold lower chances all right i don't even know where that one is Barcelona. Okay, and this one is click to focus on the region of the most disloyal characters or your covert location. Let's see here. All right, then we're going to click on here. Must be this one. Yeah, what do they need? Make a coup. Click to focus on the region. That doesn't make any sense because that's not. Huh. I don't know why that would be. like I got a problem building those only because of missing uh, trade goods so I got to find trade with somebody for legumes leather and brass this one I just need brass and construction called uh, plain it says Mm. 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 Go back to here. Mm. Okay. Well, like I said, we will learn as we go. So let's go ahead and save. El Sid. Uh, number one. But the A, right? Save. All right, now we can exit. So we'll be back again next week with another episode. I realize this type of game is not everyone's cup of tea. It's kind of a huge grand strategy, empire building, etc., etc., with a little bit of war thrown in. But it's something I don't do very often, and, and so it's good to practice. I'm more of a tactical kind of guy, I guess. But we're going to learn as we go and have fun while we do it. So leave a like, leave a comment. And uh, like I said, we'll be back next week with another episode. So as always, I am Captain Jake, wishing you fair winds and following seas. Until next time.